Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Our ceremony will begin in just a few short moments. At this time, we ask that you turn off or silence all electronic devices. Throughout today's ceremony, you'll be given various cues to stand and to be seated at the appropriate times. As a reminder, during the national anthem, military members will salute and our civilian guests should place their right hand over their hearts. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel John Cosgrove, commander of the 108th Wing. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the singing of the national anthem, and the invocation. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave or land of the free and the home of the brave. At ease. Please bow your heads with me. Most holy and high God, wherein our human tendency is to commemorate or memorialize, you wish to transform, not just to preserve the memory Captain Robert Mendez, but provide a future good in his name. We give you thanks for giving us such a glorious day, giving us an opportunity to be here this afternoon. And we ask that you, O oh Lord, will be with us at this ceremony as we dedicate this civil engineering complex's usefulness in the name of Captain Mendez to the glory and honor of your name. Amen.
Thank you, Staff Sergeant Beltran, for that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. And thank you, Chaplain Kaler, for that wonderful invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Before we begin today's ceremony, we would like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests and the family members in attendance today. Today, we would like to welcome the mayor of Bordentown Township, Mr. Stephen Benowitz, and his wife, Ellen. Brigadier, Brigadier General Patrick Kennedy, Assistant Adjutant General Ayer. <laughs> Colonel John Cosgrove, Commander 108th Wing, and your host for today's dedication. <laughs> Colonel Thomas Coppinger, Vice Commander 108th Wing. <laughs> Colonel Stephen Rothstein, 108th Mission Support Group Commander. Colonel Stephen Hensky, 108th Maintenance Group Commander. Colonel Erica Tormson, 108th Operations Group Commander. Lieutenant Colonel Eric Ballant, 108th Civil Engineer Squadron Commander. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Dunn, 177th Missing Support Group Commander, and his wife, Melissa. Chief Michael Rakakis, State Command Chief, New Jersey Air National Guard. Chief Holly Rivera, incoming 108th Wing Command Chief. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, and all others of the 108th Wing. Thank you for being here with us today. We are also very honored to have with us today Captain Mendez's family. Please welcome his wife, Ruth Mendez, and his stepson, Matthew Malave. His parents, Lori and Marie Mendez. His sister, Michelle, and her husband, Joel. His brother, John, and his wife, Carrie. His brother, Joseph. His niece, Jillian. One more, guys. And although she couldn't be here today with us, his other niece, Emily, who's in who's in Florida, away at college, making her Uncle Robbie proud. And last but not least, his mother-in-law, Patricia Ostrowski. Thank you all for being here with us on this very special day. Distinguished guests and visitors, today, the men and women of the 108th Wing gather to celebrate the official dedication of Building 3301 as the Captain Robert M. Mendez Civil Engineer Complex. Today marks an incredibly special day for the family members and those closest to Captain Mendez. Today represents the day that we eternally memorialize the legacy of an exceptional man. Today is the day that we permanently engrave the name of a man who meant so much to so many of us. We would now like to welcome longtime friend and unit commander, Lieutenant Colonel Belent, to say a few words. All right, thank you everyone. So full disclosure, I'm a crier, so I might get emotional here. Um, I first wanna thank out everyone that helped plan this event. Uh, a lot of go work goes into the behind the scenes to bring something like this together. Uh, special thanks goes out to Ms. Connie Sizik uh, for providing us the direction we needed. Uh, Senior Master Sergeant Murata for really spearheading the effort. Um, and I'm gonna name off some of my folks that I, I know uh, helped out a lot. Lieutenant E, Master Sergeant McNaughton, Tech Sergeant Joseph, Staff Sergeants Garcia, Schoenfeld, Belzor, Summer, uh, Tarasevich, Beltran, and Airman Charles. Uh, I know I probably missed a few. Uh, I apologize, but I really appreciate all the efforts you put in today. Uh, to our distinguished visitors, Mayor Benowitz, General Kennedy, Colonel Cosgrove, Colonel Coppinger, Colonel Rothstein, Colonel Hensky, Colonel Gatormson, Lieutenant Colonel Dunn, Chief of Caucus, Chief Rivera, uh, former Base Civil Engineer, Lieutenant Colonel Novello, and former Civil uh, uh, Chief Enlisted Manager, Chief Grover, thank you all for being here today. Commanders, Chiefs, fellow Airmen, Joint Base Partners, family and friends, thank you all for coming out to share this, this day with us. I'd first like to address Rob's family and friends there are a lot of you, and it's great to see everyone out here. Um, but especially his wife, Ruth, his parents, Marie and Lori, 
Um, we are truly honored to have you here for this special day. What I'd like to impart on all of you is that we, as the military, we don't put people's names on buildings that often. Um, I don't know if you took notice when you're driving in, but as you're driving out, look, there aren't that many of them. Um, it's a really, as I found out, it's a lengthy process. It requires a lot of justification, verification, reviews, checks, rechecks, and approval at the highest levels of the military. Having a building memorialized to someone is a permanent and lasting honor that is reserved for the most deserving individual. Someone who's had a profound impact on an organization, someone who through their actions and their words has distinguished themselves as a truly positive force, and someone whose character and moral fiber are above reproach. You've heard the long list of DVs that are here today. You see the support from our fellow unit members. You see the ceremony we've put on. Very few people would get this distinction. Rob was one of those few. Sorry. So as I was preparing my marks for today, something occurred to me. Sorry, wind. <laughs> it's probably Rob messing with me. Had Rob not passed away, and events over the past two and a half years had progressed generally as they have, especially these last few months with uh, me getting selected as a mission support group deputy, um, a vacancy announcement going out for my, um, my previous position, uh, a convenient month sandwiched between an ORE and an ORI, uh, change of responsibility of our new Wing Command Chief and a governor's review this weekend. Had all that happened, and right now, probably literally right now, like you were taking an hour, we probably be having to change the command for, for me going to Major Mendez. Oh, I thought I'd get farther. <laughs> so it, it's heartbreaking, you know, that cancer took that opportunity away. Today we can do something. We can ensure that Rob's legacy will endure. And it has an opportunity to be a lasting one. Now, as I think about it, commanders, we come and go every few years. For me personally, next month will mark 22 years that I've been in the 108th Wing, and all but the last few within the Civil Engineer Squadron. So in that time, I can tell you three commanders besides myself, Lieutenant Colonel Novello, Lieutenant Colonel Wong, Lieutenant Colonel Sane. That goes back to 1997. Beyond that, no idea, which isn't to say they weren't some really fantastic, amazing, and inspiring leaders. I just don't know them. Right now, everyone in CE knows me. They better know me. <laughs> 10 years, as people come and go, if I'm being honest, maybe over half. 20 years, a handful, less than five. 30 years, no one. They will have no idea who Eric Blaine was, but they will know who Robert Mendez was. Because his name, his plaque, It'll be on the building for all to see. But it's not about the lettering or the plaque, it's about his legacy. And as the years pass, those in the unit that have directly knew him will start leaving. It's on us to ensure his legacy lives on because it is a positive one and will only strengthen our organization. This lettering, this plaque, is just a tool for us to help us do that. Today's an opportunity where we have Rob's family, his friends, his military family, Let's take our time to share our stories about him and really remember him. There are a whole lot of good reasons that Rob's name is going on this building. Let's make sure that those that come after us know what those reasons are. And since I have the podium now, uh, I would like to share a few of my experiences with Rob. So my earliest memory of interacting with him is probably close to 20 years ago, 18 maybe. Uh, it was one drill weekend and him and I, it was only us two, we were doing our PT test. Uh, so we get done with our push-ups and sit-ups um, and going up to the run portion. Uh, this was kind of near, near the golf course on the other side of the base. And I distinctly remember ste stepping up to the, to the start line, looking to my left, seeing this guy that was a little bit heavier than I was, clearly not athletic, and thinking, I am going to smoke this guy. So test facil facilitator tells us to take off, and boom, he is gone. And I tried keeping up with him for about 10 steps, and then I, I, I slowed down, I was like, no, this, 
this is just a guy, he's one of those guys that doesn't know how to pace himself, and he's going to burn out real quick. What I didn't know was that Rob ran cross country in high school and college, and I didn't stand a chance. When I finally crossed the finish line, minutes after he did, dry heaving, coughing a lung out, and ready to drop, he was just casually sitting there talking to the facilitator, like nothing. He defied my expectations that day, didn't brag about it, just quietly showed me up. Years later, uh, we started working together full time in 2009, right as we were ramping up for our, our Iraq deployment in 2010. Uh, our time together as full timers is when we really started getting closer. And, and if you think about it, we were both young officers working full time in a wing that was slowly transitioning from, you know, the old guard, you know, the strategic reserve to the new guard, which is kind of, you know, the operational force we are today. There are a lot of challenges to overcome a lot of changes in general philosophy that needed to happen at all levels of our organization. We talked about these challenges often, figuring out how we could deal with them, especially when we got a little bit more rank, a little bit more experience, a little bit more responsibility. He was an intellect, he was a thinker. He was someone that could think long term, but still live in the present. He was also an expert in his field. There is a reason we have the nicest building on campus, why it is routinely used by our joint base partners, for training seminars. There is a reason it won the Air Force Design Award. You can see that plaque on the inside of the building. Indeed, the quality you see here is a testament to his expertise. Rob was an amazing engineer, knowledgeable, creative, thoughtful. When there was a complex issue that needed to be figured out, he was the one you wanted to brainstorm with. He was the one that could see all angles of an issue and a way to deal with them. He was a true problem solver. He was also a real wise ass. And if you knew him, you know what I'm talking about. In fact, for the first few years of his officer career, I, refer, re, I regularly referred to him as Lieutenant Instigator. He liked messing with people, and I, unfortunately, was not immune to his shenanigans. So I took command of the squadron in 2015. Uh, my son was just a little over a year old, and we had another on our way, which is my way of saying I was not getting enough sleep. Um, by this time, Rob and I were close. He knew me. He knew I was not a morning person and he knew I was chronically sleep, sleep deprived. So one of his favorite activities was coming into my office early in the morning, five, five to seven, a cup of coffee, and nonchalantly delivering some really bad news. Something like, hey boss, you know that project you've been working on, working overtime day and night for the past few weeks, a really high visibility project? Yeah, NGB just shot that down, they don't like your format. And then he would just send me, it would immediately send me, like my blood pressure rising, shot of adrenaline going, start tirade and I, I'm seething on the inside and just in this internal rage. And I would hear him walk next door to the chief's office with his cup of coffee, just dip, it, dip in and just say, got him. <laughs> so what Rob w would conveniently leave out was, yes, something had gone horribly wrong, project had gone off the rails or something. He had already intercepted it, he had fixed the issues, everything was fine. But he wouldn't tell me that, at least at first. I like to think that he was, it was just his way of helping me wake up in the morning, you know, from having small kids, but I know he likes messing with me. As my deputy, Rob would routinely do everything he could to support me. He was someone I could confide in, bounce ideas off of, brainstorm with, someone I could rely on to tell me when I was way off base, Give me that brutal, honest, yet constructive feedback I needed to make decisions. In short, he was the perfect deputy. I can't tell you how many times he would pop in to remind me of an important meeting or suspense that he somehow instinctively knew had fallen off my radar. I'd always thank him and tell him he had just saved me. He'd brush off the thanks, jokingly saying that he was just looking out for his self-interest. His philosophy was to make me look so good that my leadership would have to move me out and then he could take my job. But I know that self-interest wasn't him. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone that cared as deeply for our people as he did. It was fairly common for him to stay after work or after drill for a few hours to talk to someone that was going through something and just needed to talk to somebody. He had an ability to deeply and personally connect with people that few of us do. He always had our backs. He didn't seek the personal glory. He just wanted to do right by our people. He was a great leader and someone who would have developed into a powerful force in the New Jersey Air National Guard, of that I have no doubt. So one last anecdote before I uh, close, and uh, this is the one I put, actually put in the justification that went up for uh, approval. 
So August of 2016, and this will probably be the hardest one for me to get through, uh, we were scheduled for a two-week training deployment to Camp Hines, Maine. Uh, due to several competing priorities within the wing, there was a lack of experienced personnel to, uh, to, to lead this team. At this point, Rob had been receiving uh, treatment for a sev severe back pain for well over a year. Despite this, he did not want the training deployment to, to fail, so he came to me and said, boss, I got this. Now, during the deployment, personnel slept in cots. This quickly exacerbated his back pain. He tried to hide it from everyone, but it was quickly, uh, quickly became evident that he was suffering. However, that did not stop him from visiting the job site daily to ensure all construction activities were progressing as scheduled, nor did it stop him from being actively engaged in the morale of his team. And as a result of his leadership and guidance, the deployment was a major success. All personnel received job training they could not have otherwise received at home station. Work was accomplished safely and effectively. Several quality control issues from previous rotations were identified and fixed. And many of our folks were recognized by the cadre for their superior performance. A week after everyone returned from the deployment, Rob's back pain became so severe that he couldn't come into work anymore. A few weeks after this, he was admitted to the emergency room. He was soon diagnosed with kidney cancer that had spread to several locations, including his spine. We would later learn that the cancer had compromised the structural integrity of two of his vertebrae. The source of his chronic back pain was, in essence, a broken back. Few people can fathom the agony this must have caused him. Despite the crippling pain, Rob pushed through and provided the leadership that his people needed. He put the needs of those he led above his own, a true selfless leader. So for me, whenever I walk into this building, I will feel his legacy defying expectations, being the very best at what you do, working hard to be the expert, being a supportive follower and inspiring leader, being a communicator, someone who could deeply connect with people, doing all this with an infectious positive attitude and a sense of humor, being a true wingman. To the men and women of the Civil Engineer Squadron, I charge all of you with making sure that every airman who walks through these doors knows who Rob Mendez was and the legacy he leaves behind. <clears throat> and when all of our names have been forgotten in history, make sure the airmen of the 108 Civil Engineer Squadron know Captain Robert M. Mendez. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out today. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Ballant. We would now like to invite Captain Mendez's stepson, Maddie, to the podium to say a few words. Okay. I'm not a very good public speaker, so I apologize in advance. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming today. Um, obviously, it's a very special day and I'm truly humbled and honored to be here for such a special occasion. Um, standing here in front of his um, family, friends, and colleagues that he all cared so much for. Rob loved the Air Force and was a proud, talented, and dedicated airman. He was also a tremendous father, a devoted and dedicated husband, a great son, and a brother, and overall, the most honorable person that I have ever met. When Rob passed, it was devastating. Not just because he was such a great person, but also because it was a life cut far too short. Even now, I will often think of him and wish he was still here, and think of what he would say in certain situations. However, I've learned to take the lessons he taught me as a father and apply them to my own life. Through his words and encouragement, I found the inspiration to re-enroll into community college, doing well, and getting a scholarship to University of Oklahoma, where I'm currently studying business. This building will be a monument to a man who worked hard with no regard for recognition, 
and I hope that his legacy will live on into eternity as a beacon of hard work, dedication, and honor. I just want to say thank you for the US, uh, to the U.S. Air Force for letting me say a few words, and most importantly, thank you for Robert Mendez, my stepfather and a true father, for making all of our lives and the world a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maddie. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of the 108 Civil Engineer Squadron would now like to present a few mementos to the family members of Captain Mendez. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the official dedication of the Captain Robert M. Mendez Civil Engineer Complex. Please, Maddie. Ready? One, two, three. Please remain standing. Will the members of the official party and family members please join us for the ribbon cutting ceremony and the unveiling of the memorial plaque. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this very special occasion. Please join us inside for a small reception.